Hello my friends, welcome to Anna's Violets. Today I'm going to show you my sad story of my Hoyas and I hope to help you to see and to notice that your Hoyas are sick, they have some problems and how to fix it. These are my Hoyas. I had 22, now I have just 21 because one already died. Why? <laughs> I don't know, but now they have a serious issue. And I decided to tape this video to show you uh, what is the problem, how to find it out and how to notice it early, what to do not to lose time and eventually not to lose your Hoyas. So today I'm going to tell you about their uh, problems basically and it's not about care tips, it's not about how to water, when to water, what type of soil to use, but instead what problems they may have even if you do everything right. These Hoyas were happily growing always indoors. I have them on my shelves in my living room and everything was perfect. The light, the conditions and everything is good. But what I did wrong and this is why I want you to be careful with this. So basically it was autumn, it was getting cold outside and I was bringing my old plants from the balcony inside. Um, and I washed them, of course, to, you know, to get rid of all pests or diseases that may be um, on the plants that grow outside. And everything was fine. I think I did their everything fine and correct as well. But then I swapped plants and one of them, which is the money tree, uh, I think it had an issue. But I was flying to Italy and I taped that video actually on that same day when I was going to Italy. Oh, it was such a beautiful trip. I was there with my boyfriend and we went to this Sassetta mountain, which is such a... It's just breathtaking. It is so beautiful. It is gorgeous mountain. It's like, actually, it's very famous uh, for this very romantic occasions. And so many tourists go climb there or take a cable, cable car just to go up there, which is, I don't know, 2,000, 3,000 something kilometers above the sea level. It's really high, it's very steep and it's a very romantic settings for everything. And I was there with my boyfriend. Okay, no, no proposal. No proposal happened. Okay, and before leaving to my trip, I took all precautions to, to keep my plants healthy. So I brought them back from the balcony, I washed them, I placed them, placed them uh, separately on the shelves and I asked my neighbor to water them. She always does that when I'm on trips, so thank you so much Helga. But what happened is that this one plant that I swapped just before my trip I just repotted it. Of course, I noticed that the roots and uh, the, the roots were rotten, and there was some issue with the leaves. But I thought, okay, this plant is just overwatered, and I noticed a stain on a leaf. But I didn't pay really close attention to it because I was in a hurry. I was, you know, taping a video and packing at the same time. So I actually taped that video just I don't know an hour before my uh, before I left to the airport. So I was really in a hurry, and I didn't put that plant separately. If you ever buy a plant, get a plant from someone, doesn't matter, you need to put this plant in quarantine for at least two or three weeks. And in this time, this time will be actually enough for you to see if there's an issue with the plant, if there's a disease, if there are insects, so that you don't really have this disease spread to all of your plants, which, yeah, you guessed it, now I have it. So it's not only about Hoyas, but actually my old plants, I will need to take care of them. All right, so what did I do and what you should do too? Well, of course, number one, well, step number one, don't panic. <laughs> this happens and it's not about getting rid of all the insects. Of course, it's ideal if you have one, two, ten plants. Yes, you can be really like without any pests, without any insects or diseases. That's really easy. But if you are like me growing 200, 300 plants in one area, this is sometimes not the, not the case and it's not about getting rid of all of them or getting, you know, uh, frustrated that you have a pest, but it's all about pest control. So just controlling their quantity so that they do not harm your, your plants. One or two is easy to control, but if you have this huge infestation when you lose your plants, that's already too late. So now I'm trying to help you to identify the issue early enough so that you can take the steps. Step number two, of course, you can wash your plants. With some, uh, with some insects, this may be enough. For example, with aphids, it's really easy to get rid of them. You can just uh, use a hose, 
this uh, strong current of water, not so cold, but also not hot, of course, like room temperature water, and you can just wash your plants. And then all these aphids will, you know, fly away, will fall, fall off and problem solved. Step number three, and also this is something that you can do even if you do not have pests or if you do not have insects, this is actually helping to kind of prevent them. What you can do is from time to time, you can spray your plants with um, soap water, which you can also, to which you can also add neem oil. So a little bit of um, neem oil, which stinks horribly. So if it's possible to do it outside, do it outside. In my case, I've done it inside and I've, uh, yeah, it was not possible to breathe anymore. I had to open all the windows and doors to kind of really, really get rid of the stinky air. But if you have this kind of issue, which I'm going to show you in a second how you can find it out, it's not really easy to get rid of this and it's not enough if you just wash your plants or if you, you know, spray them with neem oil. So I had to take some, you know, more serious uh, actions. So for example, let me show you this one. The most important thing is that you, you pay attention, of course, to your old plants always, but uh, the easiest way to find it out if something is wrong with your plants is if you take a look at this uh, very young growth, very young leaves, these are the most affected ones because if you have an insect first the younger leaves will be damaged and in case of hoyas tendrils they just get dry and fall off so if you see that you have a short tendril and it gets dry and falls off you may have some pests then you need to check the leaves uh, underneath the leaves the soil etc if you have longer uh, tendrils like this you need to give them support, but this is a topic for another video. You need to give them support because if the tendril doesn't find any support to climb on, um, they may, may get um, dry as well and they will start growing leaves only if you have support. This is a topic of another video. Now let's continue. So next, what you do, you check the leaves. You can check the leaves from the surface to see if everything is fine with them, but it's also easier if you, uh, you will spot them better and faster if you just look at the bottom, like underneath the leaves. And these are exactly the, the signs, the signals that you have a pest. What pest is this? Don't freak out, but it's thrips. You can see this yellowish brownish dots, um, but also you can see this kind of yellowish or uh, even silvery um, spots and you will definitely notice them because you will see this discoloration the leaves will look pale discolored they will be yellowish or this silver as if there is this um, silver cover on the leaves and definitely that's thrips it just what it does it just takes the juice out of your leaves and the leaves are uh, damaged this way so it's not really easy for them to, for example, really uh, go through this very thick hoya leaves. And this is why now here what I had, uh, just a tendril got damaged. But these tiny ones, these very thin and very tender leaves like this ones, uh, it was really, really damaged. And you can see that if, if I didn't stop it on time, I would lose the whole plant. You can you can wash, you can use a soap water together with neem oil, which you will need to use for a couple of times. You will need to basically uh, use it for and spray all your plants for a couple of times. It means with a period of five to seven days, you will need to spray them over and over and over again. And eventually their quantity will get lower and you will get rid of them. So if I would do that with all my 200 and 300 plants, you can know already how much time it takes to take every plant to the bathroom, spray them, put them somewhere to get dry and then put them back on the shelves. And if I would do that, well, I could do that, but if I <laughs> did that, I would not have time to tape any video for you. So I went with the next step. So the next step could be using some biopesticides and by, by and by biopesticides, I mean the ones who are not uh, harmful for the nature, for the butterflies, for the, uh, for the bees. Another thing that you could do is to invite other insects which eat thrips, for example, nematodes. But okay, not everyone 
can kind of live with the idea that you have pests in your place and then there are other pests who are eating these bad pests. But also sometimes and in different countries you cannot really easily or order them on Amazon, these good pests, so to say, good insects. What I did in my case, well, I don't have pets, I don't have small kids at home, so what I did, I used this Careo. And this is such a cool thing because it's two in one. It's a fertilizer, but at the same time, it's a pesticide. All the links will be in the description if you would like to get ex exceptionally this one, but of course there are so many, you can just choose on Amazon and choose the ones that will help you. In this case, I chose this one because it will actually get rid of all the pests that you may think you can have. So it's about aphids, it's about um, mealybugs, uh, white butterfly, and of course, thrips as well. There's also instruction on how to use it because here you see the sticks, but for example, they will be too big for uh, one small pot. So we'll, you may need to uh, cut them in two or maybe even in three. But the idea here is that uh, if you use these sticks and then you just normally water your plants, your plants will get nutrients. That's awesome. But also the water absorbed from the roots will take this into the stems and the leaves and will make them poisonous. So next time the thrips will decide to eat a little bit of your, of your plants, they will be poisoned and they will die. Of course, if you see them sitting on your leaves, you can just smash them like this. And unlike aphids, where, for example, when you smash them, you would feel that there is liquid, a lot of liquid. These ones, when you smash them, when you crash them, they are really sturdy and you need to really do this. Let me know in the comments if you would like to see another video how I use this Coreo, how exactly you need uh, to use the proportions for your plants in different size of pots. And of course, let me know about your experience if you had thrips in the comments and of course how you got rid of them. Subscribe if you would like to join our growing community of plant lovers and I'll see you next time.